Well, certainly on the face of uh, reading the uh, Gillard government uh, ministerial code of conduct, the Prime Minister has breached that by his own admission. Now, he might say that there's a defence or that there's a reason or dispute the facts, uh, but there's nothing that the Prime Minister said that's coherent other than he picked the phone up to Alan Joyce to request an upgrade of airfares, which is uh, something that uh, I just don't think he can provide an explanation to. I'm not aware of any transport minister before that having done that. Uh, and again, the Prime Minister, every time he gets before the cameras, I mean, he gets angry and he's not a good person under pressure, which is never a good trait in a Prime Minister. But it seems to me that uh, the Prime Minister uh, just can't be trusted. I think his integrity is in question. And I think it's why a lot of his colleagues are starting to question his, his judgment on this and other issues. Well, I've, I've been very transparent. Uh, I've declared uh, all of that, which is why Mr Albanese knows about it. And uh, I wasn't the transport minister picking up the phone to Alan Joyce, the CEO of Australia's biggest airline, to ask for free upgrades for me and my family and then refusing to detail it uh, in an honest way. Well, we'll decide that. Uh, we'll see whether he's uh, going to live up to his own standards or not. But it's clear that he's breached the standards of the Ministerial Code of Conduct uh, in the Gillard government when he was a minister. And I think it's up to him to, to be able to answer those questions. What exactly yeah. do you want the Prime Minister to explain about his dealings with Alan Joyce? What questions specifically do you want him to answer? Well, he's, he's at odds with the account that Mr Aston's provided. And I don't think the Prime Minister's given a coherent explanation or understanding yet of exactly the nature of the conversations. We don't know the nature of the conversations between Mr Joyce and Mr Albanese in relation to the Qatar decision. And again, this is a decision that would have introduced more competition into the marketplace and would have allowed prices to come down. So people who are flying to the East Coast from WA at the moment are paying phenomenal airfares. And those airfares would have been cheaper if Mr Albanese had have decided to support the residents of WA instead of uh, supporting um, the decision not to allow Qatar in. The PM says he can only recall discussing flights with Alan Joyce in relation to non-commercial promotional flights. Does that ease your concerns? No, and that's, that's a, just not a credible statement that he's made. And I think, as I say, every time the Prime Minister steps up, uh, there are more questions than answers. Can right? we get your just response to yeah. that one, Sure, Matt, Yeah. Oh, just on the OK, we'll go these yeah. two. Yep. Uh, just, on just, on, just on those two? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, look. Queensland state election, does that give you hope Look, I think uh, every Australian uh, will look to what's happened in Queensland. You had a bad Labor government there uh, who ran up debt. Uh, they made bad decisions and ultimately uh, they were voted out because they couldn't control law and order. Hospital funding was, was not adequate. Uh, they had a situation of ambulance ramping which meant that you know people were suffering unnecessarily. You saw the situation uh, of law and order where people were having... Their homes broken into, their cars stolen, uh, there were ram raids. Uh, they'd lost control of law and order as well. Uh, Labor do a few things very poorly. They don't manage the economy well. They don't manage law and order well because they always appoint magistrates uh, to the judiciary who don't believe in imposing penalties and sentences uh, that provide a deterrent to people committing acts again. Uh, and look, I think in this state, people can distinguish between uh, federal Labor and state Labor. Federal Labor is a disaster. Uh, it's a disaster for WA because people know they're paying more for their mortgages, paying more for their rental properties, they're paying more under their overdraft to keep their business going, their turnover is down, and we've got money leaving WA to go to Africa uh, and to Asia to set up mining projects there when that extra money should be invested here in WA. You've got the nature positive laws, which are a disaster for WA and creating great uncertainty, and that's why most of the mining companies now are coming out against Anthony Albanese because he's acting against the interests of, uh, of this state. Um, in relation to UNRWA, uh, our position is that we do not support in any circumstance hard-earned Australian taxpayers' dollars going to support terrorist organisations or supporters of terrorist organisations. And if the government can't give an assurance around that money and the way that it's being spent, uh, then the money shouldn't be given to UNRWA. There are serious questions and concerns being asked and raised in relation to UNRWA and we're very uh, open to the conversation with the government uh, to support legislation or to support measures uh, that would stop money going from 
Australian taxpayers who are working harder than ever before under this government to put every dollar in their pocket uh, from going into the hands of terrorists or to terrorist sympathisers. All right, thank you very much. Thank you.